Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, as you can see, I'm quickly unboxing something for you guys. So, Artex has been really kind and decided to send me one of their acrylic marker sets. So, this is a 32 marker set and basically, instead of using like water-based or using alcohol-based, this is an acrylic marker set. So, it kind of has more of like an acrylic paint type thing. You guys probably seen acrylic markers before in the past. Usually, it comes in more of like a like a pump kind of fashion with a very kind of hard nib at one side and you kind of have to pump to get like the ink or the paint to flow through the pen. Um, what's great about acrylic markers is that they're fairly opaque. They usually can draw on like a fair amount of different surfaces and a lot of people like it for like, I guess like the matte kind of texture, very vibrant colors, very opaque kind of application. So I want to show you guys all 32 colors really quickly. They give you this kind of card with all these swatches, but I went ahead and did swatches actually twice because I kind of messed up. You'll probably see a little bit later. Um, just to get a quick idea, so from what I notice about the swatches and the actual paint marker pigments itself, there is a bit of a discrepancy, so be sure to swatch your pens. Okay, so what's great about these specific pens is that it comes with a brush nib on one side, as you can see here. So that is a 3.2 millimeter brush tip, and on the other side, you have a 1.9 millimeter fine tip um, for that. The one side is a bullet nib basically or fine tip and then we have a brush nib so i'm showing you guys a little bit of the swatching so when i was swatching i decided to do both the um brush nib and as well as the fine tip so that we could see the different application i'm actually using like the back of a watercolor scrap piece of paper that i had lying around and i found that this paper actually had a little bit more of an like opaque even texture and it laid really just like more flat there's some areas you can see got lighter as i lifted up the pen but for the most part pretty flat smooth application all the way through um for the paper that i'm going to be using today i just yet like decided to use regular cardstock and there is a little bit more um transparency that i see so i'm gonna have to layer up a bit so you can see some of the colors here um First of all, they don't really smudge off your finger, so they dry nicely. Um, but I did my best to see or show you guys whether or not it was a little bit more transparent application or if it was a little bit more opaque. Some colors were a little bit more transparent than others, but then I figured out um, that I would just have to swatch or like, you know, go over an area several times to get as an opaque application as I would need. Um, and what I noticed actually is that you actually get a little bit of leeway time for blending colors if you really need to. So you're kind of able to blend colors or push around the pigment a little bit. Now I actually haven't tried to reactivate the paint markers with water after they've been laying, like, laying on the piece of paper. So I'll put a note in the uh, on the screen right about now whether or not this kind of paint marker reactivates or whether or not it remains. I actually haven't tried other paint markers from other brands or just in general. I've only had like I think a black one and a white one from two different brands and I've only used it to kind of like use it for labeling things. So I'm actually not sure if like uh, like other acrylic marker brands, uh, whether or not the pigment would like smudge off if you had it to be exposed to water on pieces of paper and stuff. Because I know a lot of people like using paint markers on glass or just like, you know, darker surfaces and stuff or anything that you kind of want that pop of flat color. So you can see while I'm working, um, for the first one, I actually am drawing Bombongi, which is kind of like 17's uh, mascot character made by Mingyu. And I just wanted to add clouds in the background and kind of just play around the, with the color palette and try to get as many like more flat areas as I could. So you can see that there is a little bit of pilling on the cardstock and I think that's a little bit inevitable just because I'm kind of like scratching and scratching back and forth with a wet medium. Um, and you can see that for the darker blue in the front, it is much more of a flat application, but I did go over it twice um, at least. And then for the rest of the colors, I am going to go back in a little bit later to kind of refine and 
fix up a little bit of those patchier areas. So I noticed that a lot of the lighter colors do require several applications, at least like two coats of just, or two passes of the same color if you would like it to be a little bit more flat. I did it for the blue area and then I kind of mixed the pink and the purple together to see what I could get. And I noticed that I could blend a little bit. So that was kind of nice and yeah, I actually had a lot of fun using these markers. Like I said, I haven't really used acrylic markers before. This is kind of like my first go at it. I've only used paint markers for more like embellishment kind of things. And yeah, I like how vibrant the colors are and how clean and smooth the application. And I find that I actually like using the brush tip for a lot of the larger areas, you can also get thinner lines, but I found myself gravitating towards a little bit more of the fine tip just because I found I get a little bit more of a smoother application and I like having that thick consistent line that you can get. Um, I kind of botched it up in some areas because I needed to kind of refill some areas so I could get it as flat as I could. For the second drawing, I decided I wanted to do a little bit more clouds. Um, I wanted to stick a little bit more in a comfortable zone or an area just because I don't want to make it too complicated and I wouldn't be able to see whether or not the markers perform the way I would like them to. So I'm basically treating the markers or the colors as different sections and making sure I'm kind of like blocking them out um, and then leaving some areas of white if I need it as just because I feel like the white isn't as opaque as you might need it to be unless you did several applications and sometimes the white picks up the color underneath so you can't get it to be super clear or like I guess like super uh, clean if that's probably a better way to put it. So I decided to go with more of a pink, purple, and yellow color scheme. I believe the background. Yeah, I just went with like dark purple to almost like the navy blue into the back so we can go from light to dark instead of the other way for the bonbonis where I went from like dark blue to pink. Um, yeah, I had no issues with the color selection that they had. Like I said, they do have 32 colors and for the acrylic um, paint markers, the color selection is mostly within, I would say, dark to mid tones so there's not really a lot of light areas of color that you can kind of play around with with contrast but i think mostly for acrylic markers a lot of people are looking for that really poppy kind of vibrant color scheme and i actually really like that they included let's say um about eight ish um, more neutral tones or at least like more earthier tones so we have about one, two, three, four, I think like five-ish different kind of browns. And two of them lean towards kind of like a orange or like a, a gray. So it kind of falls into both. So I think like it has a good range of at least like a color range. Um, but the, the value scale, I definitely think it's definitely more mid to dark tones for sure. The only light tone that you really get is maybe A1 and A3. A7, so the two yellows, the pink and the light purple, and then the white, I think, are more of your light colors that you can really use. I found that two of the blues are a little bit similar in color, so I did find it a little bit difficult to try to, I think, how to explain this? In my last drawing, you'll probably see, because I tried my best to use all the blues so that we can have it in descending order from lightest to darkest from the background to the foreground so we could create something very different in terms of the scenery because for the first two with bonbongi and then this cloud piece i was just trying and testing around i wanted to leave it quite simple but then i ended up adding a lot more into certain areas even for like the pink clouds i tried adding a little bit more purple and i think because you have a little bit of leeway you can actually kind of blend it a little bit which makes me really curious whether or not these actually are water soluble or not. I know it says acrylic, but the texture of it, it's more matte. There is some areas where it looks a little bit shinier and I think that's any colors that are either darker or have a kind of more thicker application. So a lot of my pinks and purples, like my light purples, my light blues, um, aren't really shiny when shined in the light and stuff. It's quite matte. 
but I can see like my navy blue, my dark purple, even my white is a little bit shinier um, when I put it under the light. But it doesn't have like that plasticky feeling that I think a lot of acrylic has. And I'm pretty sure for other acrylic markers, it's also very matte. So I think that still falls in line with everything else. Uh, yeah, for this one, I decided to highlight some of the clouds with a yellow rim lighting just to make it pop a little bit. I wanted to make sure that the white is what's mostly highlighting it, so I didn't want the yellow to take over too much. And you can see that it was easy for me to add yellow stars on top. Um, Vol a little bit faded, but like I said, if you would like them to be brighter, I think you would just let it dry and then you can go back in and definitely make them a little bit brighter. And I feel like the transparency is kind of nice for some things because you can kind of layer it up and keep things a little bit more like subdue. And then if you want it to stand out more, you can definitely just keep adding more and more layers so that the color is very vibrant. Had a little fun like adding textures, adding these little kind of like highlighting dots or a little hashing um, to add a little bit of shadow and texture because I find that because I have a lot of dark colors, I don't want to add such dark shadows to everything. So I did add the pink and the purple to the moon itself. And then I used the dark purple to do outlines because there's something that I really love about kind of like more flat colors where it has like bold line work. So that's what I kind of wanted to do. I'm just using cardstock and I blocked off everything with washi tape. I did the two sketches in, I think, Prismacolor Coli Race, I think, and the color Carmine is what I used for these sketches. And yeah, it basically covered up all the lines and things, so you know, I didn't have any lines peeking through, which is kind of nice. Just really flat um, and opaque application, like I said. Some of them require a little bit of layering, but I didn't find too much of an issue. It's fairly like therapeutic for me to work this way. I don't usually do kind of like these more bold, more simple, like simpler, more simple, more simple, and kind of like flat colors. I think it looks really cute though. I would like to do a few more like this in my sketchbook or something. I think it'd be fun to do, especially with the color range. I'm in love with the pink and the purple in this set, if you can't tell. Um, and I really like the blues. It's just a lot of those colors are like up my alley. But just to make sure that I'm using some other colors, I decided to draw a few slimes because I was very curious about the yellows and the oranges. I didn't really use too many of the earthy tones, but I'll think about that maybe in the future and maybe I'll use them for another future video. But I decided to draw um, Electro Slime, the yellow one, and then the Pyro Slime, which is on the right. So he kind of has a gradation of orange to yellow going downwards. And you can see that I could blend it a little bit. And then I kind of went over top again to make sure that the middle orange is kind of a little bit more flat in color. And then right behind these two is a dendro slime. So I wanted to make sure to include also the dendro slime because I wanted to use a little bit more of green. So yeah, he's looking a little patchy for now. I will do a second pass so we can get it looking a little bit more flat. And then for the background, I decided to just leave it very dark. I'm not too sure if it's just because my brain wasn't really working while I was working on this one that I had a hard time thinking of what background color would have fit um, the kind of yellowy orange and green color scheme that I have. I think I could have gotten away with using maybe one of the more earthier tones so that it gave it more of a warmer setting. But in the end, I think it's because I was using kind of like this dark bluish green for the outlines and then I switch to the navy blue which is what I'm using right now for the dendro slime and I kind of wish I used the lighter color for the background. I do like the little dots that kind of outline the dendro slime and the electro slime and I kind of lose that texture because I actually use the navy blue for the background and that's where I notice the most kind of like sheen on the paper is from that navy blue application. But yeah, I think I did two passes for each of the colors here for the most part, other than I think the yellow. I think the yellow is actually quite matte and flat for the most part. But yeah, I think I did two passes for majority of the other colors if I wanted to be completely opaque. So the last one that I'm going to be working on, I 
done kind of like underwater scenes in the past with like some of my Wanu illustrations and it's been like I would focus on a specific color palette and draw Wanu underwater so I've done kind of this thing where I've silhouetted foreground elements to be a little bit darker sometimes or sometimes a lot lighter it depends on how I did the color scheme but for me I decided that I wanted to work from dark to light so I'm making a lot of the foreground elements very dark um, because they're super close to you and it gets a little bit more lighter as we go back and I decided to just use the blues in that kind of order so in the set we kind of have one two three four five blues we have like a navy blue a more of like a royal blue and three blues I do not know how to explain um but you can see the no third one and the current one that I'm using are very similar in hue um so I kind of wish uh, they probably could have gotten away with either maybe a lighter blue or added a another color instead of one of these blues because I think they're a little bit too similar in hue. Um, granted, one's a little warmer than the other, so maybe, you know, one would fit a different application versus a different one. Um, so while I was letting the foreground kind of dry a little bit, after it was finished drying, I decided to go ahead and outline with the color that is darker than what is in the front basically so I didn't really use the darkest blue for the very foreground um, so that I could outline some stuff a little bit more easily and then I decided that I needed some areas that were showing shadows of the structures rather than just the outlines like I did for the clouds so I decided to just chip those in so it looks more like of a flatter plane so we can get a little bit more texture here and there and then at the end i'll add some green areas i think i add purple because i decided to fade it into purple then pink in the background so we can get it gradually lighter and lighter and like i mentioned pink and purple were kind of like the lighter colors in the color palette anyways like from the selection of markers that they do have um but overall i really enjoy these markers I don't have a lot of experience using paint markers, but from my first impression and doing four small illustrations, I really enjoyed it. I think the application is quite nice. Like I said, I'm not too sure if this is normal, like you have to do a few passes or whether or not, you know, this is a little bit more transparent, but I think I like the, like the fact that these are a little bit more workable so that you can kind of blend colors if you really need to. And you can do so by like easily layering them up and then going back with whatever your main color was. And here you can see that I'm adding bubbles and I will lighten up some of the bubbles by layering up lighter color just to make sure that the highlights of those kind of stand out a lot more. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it wasn't specifically a sketchbook session even though today is Monday, but I thought it'd be more appropriate because I think Monday suits my traditional videos a little bit more and i was gonna draw in my sketchbook for these but i had an extra cardstock lying around so i thought why not just split it and just paint on these for now so i have the opportunity to kind of like flip and turn the paper with ease but yeah this is the last one underwater scene and my slimes so i will just go ahead and untape this I know some people really like the satisfying tape peeling portion, peel porn, I guess, but yeah, I didn't really do it this time or like ever. So I am just gonna zip right through these. And you can see that the paint actually doesn't bleed through the washi tape either. So that's really nice. And I had only a little bit of warping on the paper because yeah, like I said, this is acrylic paint. So it does have a little bit more moisture than you would probably think. Here are some close-ups. Hopefully you guys can see how the application on the paper is. You can see a bit of the texture in some of the places where I went over. But you can see right here as well, I can kind of clean up things nicely. Put the yellow on top of the purple so I can kind of fix up the shape of the moon a little bit. Because I did mess up on the, that one and the bonbongi one as well. But yeah. And you can see here is the sheen. On some of them you can see some of where i kind of like scritch and scratched on the paper with the fine tip but yeah i like the fact that it has two different kind of like tips because brush tip is very helpful and the fine tip is very great for a consistent application but yeah 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and thank you again for Artex for sending me their 32 color acrylic marker set. I really like the sets. I think it was very fun to play with the colors and I love the fact that you don't have to press down to activate these markers. They're just ready to go and yeah, it's kind of more mess free that way. So yeah, thank you very much for watching guys and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!